Have you been involved in an accident whilst on exercise, operations, or even on the vehicle park? Then take two ibuprofen and get on your way. Hey everyone, and welcome to The Savvy Squaddy. I feel that I actually have to say this, but that intro was a joke. And this video is actually about the Armed Forces Compensation Scheme. There is a lot to the AFCS, so in this video I will just be covering the basics of it. The main thing to keep in mind is that most claims will be looked into on an individual basis, with facts and evidence from that specific incident. So just because your mate gets a payout due to breaking his leg, doesn't automatically mean that you will if your leg breaks, as it depends on a lot of different things that will be investigated with each claim. So firstly, what is the Armed Forces Compensation Scheme? The AFCS provides compensation for illness, injury or death where caused fully or partly by an individual service in the Armed Forces on or after the 6th of April 2005. It is available to both regulars and reservists. Anything prior to the 6th of April 2005 will come under the War Pension Scheme, but I will not be going into that in this video. What makes you eligible for compensation though? Pretty much, you have to show that the injury sustained was more likely than not caused by service. There is also a 7 year time limit to make a claim from either the day the injury was sustained or worsened, or from the day your service ends. Now, some factors that mean an injury was more likely to be caused by service include, but aren't limited to, if you are acting on orders, responding to a service related emergency, being on operations or exercise, participation in service approved and recognised sport, or performing an activity specified in your job description. If you're injured and the cause falls under one of these categories then you stand a good chance of being compensated. When it comes to where an injury has been worsened due to service, there still needs to be a more than 50% probability that it was the service that worsened it. But also, the pre-existing injury must have been recorded on your medical reports upon entry to service. The only exception to this is where you weren't aware of the actual injury before joining and the initial medical exams never picked it up. To be eligible for this type of compensation, the injury must have worsened within the first five years of service and you must have spent the rest of your service medically downgraded due to the worsening. This type of claim cannot be submitted until the end of your service. This is because the end of your service is the time at which the injury will no longer worsen because of the service, which makes sense. When it comes to common occurrences like slips, trips and falls, one of the following criteria needs to be met before the AFCS will award compensation and they are if you're conducting an activity of a hazardous nature or if you're conducting an activity in a an hazardous environment and that's the immediate environment of the person, not the geographical area, or if you're training to improve or maintain your effectiveness in the forces, and this includes doing fizz in your own time or on leave. If you incur an injury or illness or die as a result of disobeying orders, being at a social event unless you have been ordered to be there, a bit like force fun, using alcohol or drugs, or participation in a sporting activity that hasn't received prior approval, or because of a personal habit or choice that you have made, like smoking, then you will not be able to claim under the Armed Forces Compensation Scheme. You will also not be eligible to claim if you get injured whilst commuting. This is because travel to and from work is an activity that is not unique to the Armed Forces. And if something happens on a road within a military camp, it is not automatically accepted as being a result of service, but instead it will be determined on the case facts. Also, if you happen to die as a result of service, then the compensation will be paid out to your dependents. Now we know the eligibility criteria. What compensation could you get? Every compensation award includes a lump sum payment for the injury. Where the injury sustained is more severe, that it will affect you earning money in Civvy Street, then you will be awarded a GIP, or Guaranteed Income Payment. This is a monthly payment for the rest of your life that is tax free and also index linked so you won't lose out to inflation. There are nine different categories or descriptors that your injury will fall under. These are burns, injury wounds and scarring, mental disorders, physical disorders, amputations, neurological disorders, senses, fractures and dislocations, and musculoskeletal disorders. The AFCS also uses a tariff system with 15 levels which reflect the severity of the injury. Tariff level 1 being associated with the most serious injuries and 15 with the least serious. The more severe the injury, then the higher the compensation. This tariff system is designed to deliver consistent awards for injuries of different category but similar severity. The levels break down as such. 
Level 1 to 4 is if you would be unable to work again due to the injuries sustained. Level 5 to 6 is if you would be able to work but at a significantly reduced earning capacity. Level 7 to 8 is if you would be able to work but your earning capacity would be reduced by around half. Level 9 to 11 is if you would be able to work but will experience a lower level of earnings due to your injury. And level 12 to 15 is if your future civilian earning capacity will be unaffected by your injury or illness as it does not have any significant permanent effects. If your injury or illness falls between tariff level 1 to 11, then you would be entitled to a GIP. However, the amount of GIP will decrease the closer your injury is to level 11. You will get 100% of the GIP if it falls between 1 and 4 but you will only get 30% of GIP if your injury or illness falls between 9 and 11. And this makes sense, as you are in a much better position to earn money in Civvy Street if your injury falls into the higher tariff levels than if it falls into the lower ones. At the time of recording, the most payable compensation award to someone who has sustained the most profound injuries in a single incident is £650,000, which is a tariff level 1. But if you fall into this level, then you would also be entitled to a GIP, which can be up to and over £1 million over your lifetime. You can see from this table the amount of a lump sum you could get depending on what tariff your injury falls under. In some cases you might also be awarded a supplementary award. This will be instead of a GIP. This is if the injury sustained does not affect your future employability but instead has some effect on aspects of your function or self-image, confidence and self-worth. For example, if your genitalia were damaged and you became infertile. This doesn't affect your future earning capacity in Civvy Street, but it does affect your ability for kids in the future, and so you will be compensated for that. Hopefully this example will help explain things. Joe is age 36 and has an income of £35,000. He unfortunately loses his leg and is medically discharged from the army. His injury is assessed as a tariff level 5. He will therefore get a tax-free lump sum of £180,250, and he is also entitled to a GIP or Guaranteed Income Payment. The GIP is calculated by multiplying your salary by the GIP factor. The GIP factor is dependent on your age. So for Joe, this would be 35,000 multiplied by 1.014, which equals 35,490 pounds. As I mentioned earlier, depending on what tariff level your injury falls into will depend on the percentage of the GIP that you will get. As Joe's injury is a tariff level five, he will get 75% of the total GIP which is £26,618 per year. However, Joe is entitled to ill health benefits from the Armed Forces Pension Scheme, which is £13,750 per year, and so the GIP is adjusted appropriately. Joe therefore still gets £26,618 a year, but this is split between the AFCS paying £12,868 and the AFPS paying £13,750, both of which are adjusted each year in line with inflation. So how can you apply for the scheme? There is a form on the Gov website that you will need to fill out. However, if you are medically discharged and have not attempted to already claim for the injury, then DBS Veterans UK will automatically do it for you to see if you are eligible for compensation. You can also appeal if you feel the outcome was not correct, but do this within 12 months of being given the initial result. Now, here are some extra things to keep in mind. You can claim on any personal insurance you might have and the AFCS will not pay you less because of this. However, the insurance company might pay out less to you if they also know you're getting compensation from the armed forces. If you sustain an injury and it is found that part of it is due to your own negligence, then you could lose up to 40% of any award. You will also not be awarded any compensation for any self-inflicted injuries as well, unless it is due to a mental disorder which was caused by service. As I said at the start of the video, there is a lot to the compensation scheme and I could not fit it all in this video. I have covered the basics to give you all a general understanding of it, but if you want more information regarding a specific injury or detail, then please refer to the JSP or speak to a professional. I am not a professional, just some guy making videos on the internet. The Armed Forces Compensation Scheme is there, so use it if you're entitled. I have seen people get injured but didn't even know that this even existed. I hope that this video has helped and explained the basics of the scheme. If you have used the scheme before, then leave a comment down below describing the process and if you found it worthwhile. Thank you all for watching. If you liked what you just saw, please hit the subscribe button up there. And if you want to see some more videos, click over there. See you soon.